Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 235. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up, Ben Gemmett has dug up win games backslash unclassified backslash YABWI. I've got this weird sensation that I know what this is going to be, even though if, I have no idea what that is. Like, I can see the letters I-E-Y-E. -E. There's no I in there. Well, there is an I. <laughs> Words. <laughs> Anyways, um, you got to read me, an I and I, and the executable. So, yet another something Windows I program. Okay. Yeah, well, Yab W I is a cursor tracking eyes program that also monitors system resources and displays current time. <laughs> oh, so this is going to be virtually nothing, isn't it? Well, this is a first. Yab what E I or whatever, however you're supposed to say it, is beerware. <laughs> So basically, if you find this program useful or amusing, then you have to buy the programmer a beer. <laughs> and the programmer in question is uh, Jeff Tomlinson. It's a heck of a lot easier name to pronounce than whatever that's supposed to be. Okay, so this is just a, just a, just a thing on the desktop. I ran it, nothing happened, and yeah, it's just a thing on the desktop. Oh boy. Well, like, I mean, it is showing, like, different pieces of information. So, like, I mean, it's showing the current time, because it's actually kind of late right now. Um, GDI, FSR, so I'm guessing memory usage or something. And the funny thing is, is that I don't, I have quite a bit of memory allocated to this thing, so. And apparently there's a setup here. Not available in this release. Well, good. <laughs> And then we've got our about screen. Apparently this was made in December 91. And yeah, there's really nothing more to this thing. And unfortunately, this was Ben Jemmett's last dig, so I'm gonna have to get some more from him. Next up, we have a four-person team dig from Dookie, Felicity, Joseph Adams, and Christian Topnick. Win games backslash strategy backslash Rhapsody. Okay, this has to be something, especially with that many people trying to dig this thing up. Well, we've got a setup. We've got the executable. Um, we've got a couple, we've got a few DLLs here. Hmm. Not sure. So we got Rhapsody, a King Kong battle, version 1.0, Jeffrey Markin, apparently a $10 registration. It's an interesting two-player strategy game for Windows. Okay, um, <laughs> you want to tell me a little more than that? <laughs> it's kind of a short file ID.diz. Now we do have the text file here. So, congratulations on your selection of Rhapsody, a King Kong battle. This is a two-player animated game for Windows. Each player has a King Kong who will try to capture the other player's King Kong. So, double King Kongs. Got it. You'll select how many battle points it takes to win a game. Application... Wait, what? <laughs> this application has been loaded onto your system and a program group created for JRM... Interesting. So, this sounds like this is like text that's supposed to show up when you run the setup program? Why would it be put in a .txt file then? Because usually this putting a .txt on your file suggests that someone should be generally able to just open it and read it. But this has been worded like it's supposed to show up during the setup. Huh. Well, okay, let's see if it runs without having to run the setup first. Um, game of shareware, got Jeffrey Markin. 1.0, and no maximize button. Center screen, perfect. So we got options, game, playing the game. The object, object? <laughs> the object of this game is for each player to capture the other, okay. So you'll enter a set of directions for your King Kong. He will walk along following these directions till he hits a building or the city limits, which are at the edge of the game's window. If he reaches the other player's King Kong, then you win the battle and collect a point. Keep fighting battles until one player reaches the total number of points required to win. 
Huh. So it almost seems as though this is going to be like, almost like a programming game, but just with really basic programming, because like it looks here like you're telling it to go north by a particular amount, then east by a particular amount, and south. Huh. Okay, so new game. So left player name will be me, right player name will be not me. And total points to win is seven. Okay. So, I'm guessing this is me, and this is not me, so, <laughs> oh, we do have a compass, in case we didn't know which direction was northwest, south, and east, um, and apparently I have to turn that off from the menu. Yeah, the only thing I'm not sure on here is just how far like things are supposed to register here. So if I said like north a hundred, north two hundred, east um, five hundred, south fifty, east two hundred, like okay, starting to walk. Oh, if you hit the building, you die. So the trick is you've got to figure out commands without running into anything. It's kind of almost like a very weird form of a really weird form of an artillery game. So I think with this Kong here, let's go west by. If this is a 640 by 480 window, then I'm going to say west by 280. We're going to go north by 30, no 40. Go west another. 100, and then south 80? Let's see if that works. So walking along, walking along, went north, went west again, and went south a little too early. Okay, I do like that the game remembers the commands you put in so that you can just sort of modify them as opposed to having to type them out all over again. If the game didn't do this, that would be really evil. Okay, so I'm gonna say north 80, east by I'm gonna say 400, south by 40, east 200, go. Okay, move to north, then moving east, and sooner or later it's gonna go south, or go too far east. Whoops. So with with not me here, needed to go a little more west after the divergence. So I'm gonna say west 160. And let's see if that works. So moving along, moving along, then goes up, then goes sideways, and um and there you go. You have captured Gemini's King Kong. And then we just... Whoa. Um... <laughs> that water tower... Wait a minute. How, is there even enough room here for me to get out? What kind of nonsense is this? Okay, let's see if we even have enough r space here. No. I started moving down and hit the water tower. I can't get out of here. Well, yeah, I mean, likewise, he can't get in, he can't get me here, but what the heck? This, 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 why? <laughs> why would you let your randomizer put the buildings so close to each other that you can't escape? Okay, so that was Rhapsody, a King Kong battle. Um, the registration on this was $10, if I recall. Yep, $10. Like, I mean, it's an interesting concept for a game where you have to basically type in your directions and your distances, and if you get them wrong, then you got to do it over, but of course it remembers what you last input. Like, it's an interesting concept, but given what just happened here, I think the execution needed a little more work with the procedural generation of the buildings. Though that said, like, I mean, it's not terrible, like, as far as the gameplay itself is concerned when this isn't happening, but, you know, it's, uh, would I pay $10 for this? Like, probably not, but, 
as I, as I said, it's still interesting. Next up from RuneFox, we've got WinGames backslash arcade backslash WSlam. I'm pretty sure I know what game this is. Um, we got a file id.diz, readme, and help. What's the diz say? Slam 1.0 air hockey game. Yep, that's exactly what I was expecting. Play against a computer opponent with adjustable quickness and aggressiveness. I'm not sure if this has appeared on Shovelware Diggers yet, but it's about to. Like this is a game that this is a game that I've kind of been expecting to show up sooner or later because it was pretty um, ubiquitous in the Windows 3.1 days. So thank you for trying Slam. I started writing this game back when Windows 3.0 was still in beta test and worked on it for a few days, shelved it for many months, worked on it another few days, etc. Despite my busy work schedule and my unexpected attainment of a social life and subsequent marriage, I have finally finished the program. So yeah, this is essentially just an air hockey game, but it has some pretty interesting depth to it for a Windows 3.1 program. So, like, I mean, there's not really much to see in the see in the help data here. Uh, the only th tr trick is I'm not sure if it's like shareware or freeware. It's apparently made by a Robert Epps, and I'm not sure because, like, I mean, I'm not seeing any like registration info in here. Oh, there is a registration fee. It's ten dollars. Never mind. <laughs> but you know what? Ten dollars. I. Since I already know what this is, $10 is actually more than acceptable for this program. So at first glance, it's just like, it looks like an air hockey thing. Well, first of all, this supports com total resolution customization. It'll work with any resolution you give it because it's doing everything as vector graphics. So that's one thing that's fun. Another thing that's fun here is that you can change the colors. And the way you do this, if I'm remembering now, is you click, no, right click on the particular color you want to change. So I right clicked on the table so I can now make it say a red table. And that's actually hard to look at. Um, let's make it dark yellow. Okay, or we could do a black table. There you go for the full for the full um, synthwave effect. Now we'll we'll go back to green, but then you can also change like the puck colors, so we can make it like a cyan color if we wanted to, or make it purple. That would be confusing. But also, what you can do is you can change the opponent's stats here, so you basically have full customization over the AI's capabilities. But you can also adjust the viewing angle. So you can get like a full overhead view if you wanted to, or if you're really crazy, you could do this, and you would never be able to play the game ever. <laughs> but no, that's what's fun about this here, is that you can change the viewing angle to whatever you want, and it kind of makes the game more dynamic in that manner. And there's also sound effects, and I think that's about it for here, so let's just get started playing it. So, new game, you click the main area to lock it, the paddle in, and then you just move it around. And yeah, this plays... whoops, I clicked. <laughs> this plays like air hockey. It, it even has, like, appropriate sound effects. Like, this is as close to... this is as close to real air hockey as you can get on Windows 3.1. Like, this... this... At, Having played air hockey recently, like, this feels just like it. And I accidentally scored on myself. Whoops. And hit. Oh, <laughs> he blocked it. But yeah, the physics on the physics on offer here are actually pretty accurate. The only thing this game doesn't emulate that real air hockey will do is the puck flying off of the table. Because that absolutely will happen depending on the way you hit it. Like, it's, it's always weird when it does, but... See, I don't really think there's much more to say about this program. This is, like, just... This game was everywhere. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a Windows 3.1 system that didn't have this game on it. Like, that's how, that's how many people have this thing. So yeah, there's really not much more to say about this thing. It's air hockey, and it plays really well. $10 is a more than acceptable price for just how well this plays. 
And our last dig for today from Catdog Joe is wingames backslash WC backslash Shotstar. I'm gonna get some kind of shooting game of some kind. Like, some kind of shooting game of some kind. <laughs> I'm on a roll today with redundancy. Um, where are we? Shotstar. Uh, again, a readme, shotstar.doc, and a write file. So let's go with the readme first. I really hope you are reading this first. Well, good, because <laughs> I am. So distribution package contains, make sure and use Shotstar as you see fit, providing you add nothing to the distribution package, you remove nothing from the distribution package, you are a good human at least one day this month. <laughs> That's... There's not a lot of people who would fail that qualifier. Like, I mean, I can think of a few, but most people are good at least one day. Oh, that's interesting. The doc file is actually a doc file. Maybe. Well, th that's not English. Let's put it that way. Okay, the right file's being a little more <laughs> cooperative. So, first became aware of the Shotstar game when it appeared on the cover of Byte Vol 1 Number 1. That's right, the very first one. It was written in 8080 assembler code and used a tape recorder to handle the message strings due to the fact that the target machine only had 4k of ram because i had a 6800 base machine i had to translate hand assemble and then type the hex codes in by hand <laughs> i then sat up all, sat up all night and played the game it is truly addictive hmm so it seems like we have some kind of conversion of an old um of an old terminal based systems, like an old mainframe computers game or something. Maybe? Like, I don't know. Um, well, it's, he says here 8080 assembler code. I mean, that would be old, that's for sure. Okay, well, let's just see here. The play of the game is deceptively simple. The playing field is made of stars and holes. You may only shoot at stars, hence the name. When you shoot at a star, the result is that neighbor stars and holes are affected based on their proximity to the target, and rules known only to me. <laughs> okay, well, that doesn't help us. The effect is that stars become holes and holes become stars. The exact cosmological reasons for this are unknown. <laughs> They see D. Adams' definitive work on life, the universe, and everything. It might help. <laughs> then again, it, probably not. So apparently the way you win is to end up with the exact opposite of the starting position. That is, a ring of stars with a hole in the center. You know, I got a funny feeling I know how this is going to play, just based on this description, but we'll see. Apparently this guy wanted a $5 registration. Um, do we have an author name anywhere? Where is it? The author of this was... Apparently a shoestring systems. <laughs> and maybe we'll get author info in the about section. So, incredibly low price. And all that. That's a very small window to have a maximize button. So does it maximize? <laughs> Very no. Okay, so let's play it appropriately here. I have a funny feeling I know exactly what's about to happen. If we click on a spot, it's going to basically switch everything around the spot that I click. Maybe? Well, it did it there. Oh, you're only allowed to click on the stars. Okay. Oh, and apparently if you get rid of all the stars because there's nothing else to click on, you lose. Well, that makes sense. Oh, I did find a name of the author. Jan Albright. Which is kind of fitting, given, well, we're sh shooting at stars and stars are bright. Uh, here's a stupid question. If you lose the game, how do you start it over? <laughs> I don't see a restart option. <laughs> Okay, I guess if you want to play again, if you lose, you gotta quit out and run it again. <laughs> okay then. See, I was initially playing this like it was Lights Out. And Lights Out is a game with a very sim similar concept, except you can click anywhere, and the idea is you need to get rid of everything. So this is a bit different in that we're trying to illuminate all of the edges and not the center. And we're only allowed to click on things that are already illuminated. So, should make things interesting here. I like, I mean, I just got the corners illuminated. So, still going here. 
Oh, and now I'm just back to this state. <laughs> so I undid my progress. So I mean, this was the state I was in before where I clicked here, which made this one light up and turn these ones off, and then I clicked here and everything disappeared. So clearly we don't want to do that. Well, I got close. I managed to get everything lit up except this one up here. But close doesn't count in this game. We need everything illuminated appropriately. Or else we will die. Well, I somehow managed to make it opposite now. That's not going to do it. Wait. Wait. Am I close? I think I'm close. Um, maybe not. Oh, wait. I'm pretty sure if I click the middle, you won. And that was an exit button that didn't exit the program. Brilliant. So that was Shoot Star, which is basically like a modern Lights Out game, except a much older iteration with slightly different rules. So, yeah, I don't think it's, um, how much does the guy want for it again? I think it was like $5 was registration. I'm gonna have to go into the write file here again. Um, what was it? Yeah, $5 for registration. So, I'm not sure if it's worth, like, spending $5 on something where once you know the answer, like, what, like, trying to do it and everything, like, it's, it's kind of like... I almost want to say it's kind of like playing with a Rubik's Cube, except a Rubik's Cube has so many more permutations and possibilities when you scramble it up. Whereas here, it's always the same starting state, which means sooner or later you're going to have it memorized how to reach the ending state, in which case you don't really have much of a game anymore. So... Yeah, this feels more like the beginning of a game, but then given the fact that this was made based on really old code <laughs> that was translated over, like, I mean, I guess there's you can't really expect too, too much from that. In either case, it still works fine.